Zion Williamson is one of the most polarizing players in the NBA. He's almost a guaranteed 25 and 5 player every night, but his career has been considered disappointing to most fans. In five seasons, Zion has only played 175 games due to some serious injuries, and as he continued sitting, people became uncertain how good he could be with such a small sample size. Well, this season, Zion has played a career high 61 games, and the Pelicans are winning with him, but something was still off. While their starting lineup is very talented, the numbers don't seem to show that. In fact, the Pelicans seem to be worse when their best players are on the floor together. So what's going on in New Orleans? Today we discuss why Zion's unique talent elevates the Pelican ceiling, but also creates an interesting dilemma. Zion Williamson is unlike most stars. Defenses know that Zion's going to charge the basket and finish with his left hand, but they still can't stop it. This season, he's averaging 17.5 points in the paint, even though 91% of his field goal attempts are from the restricted area, which is on par with guys like Shaquille O'Neal and Giannis Antetokounmpo. The reason he's so good from that area is because of his enormous frame. As he uses that to charge down the lane, defenders are always trying to brace for contact, which then leads to poor defensive technique. Here Zion charges at the basket, and as he gets low, Tice gets his arm into Zion's body for a foul. PJ Tucker yells at Tice to keep his arms up, but watch what happens later in the quarter. PJ Tucker is guarding Zion in isolation, and he performs the same move. As he gets low, Tucker doesn't stick to his own advice, and he gets called for that same foul. But if defenders play with their chest and hands up, Zion typically can bounce off of them and into space. As a result, Teams will attempt at matching up their centers on him to put a bigger body, but Zion complements his enormous frame with an explosive first step to drive right by them. As he gets to the basket, help defenders are often scared to square their body with him. Sometimes you'll see defenders trying to contest him vertically instead, but he's able to slither through that space to get to the basket. When they do successfully challenge him at the rim, Zion's already ready to leap again for the offensive rebound, which allows him to finish his misses. Even though he's so left-hand dominant, he's more than happy to go right because he can adjust his body to get back to his spots. He'll drive baseline because defenders are sitting on his left hand and then position himself under the basket to get his shot over multiple defenders. His ability to hang in the air allows him to change his shot to avoid any shot blockers. When defenders want to force him right, He'll use that in and out move to get the defender on his heels and then finish with his left hand. But more impressively, he can cross over the best of defenders and then launch himself into the big man for a tough finish. Since the start of 2024, as Zion got into better shape, the Pelicans got back to their most reliable offense with point Zion. Once he has the ball, help defenders need to stay in those gaps to create any cushion, which then leaves his teammates open. As a result, Zion doesn't need to make any complicated passes, but just make the right read. Even though he's only 6'6", he can still deal with the heavy traffic because of his verticality to help neutralize any size disadvantages. When he attacks, defenses tend to break common defensive principles, leaving the strong side corner for an open three. But more importantly, his teammates are learning to take advantage of the wall by priming themselves to drive when he makes the initial pass. This allows them to get through that wall and create scoring opportunities for others. The Pelicans have also figured out that running the pick and roll inside the three-point line breaks his wall as well. A pick and roll in the paint extends a help defender's closeout to their man, so they're more hesitant to help. So with more space to work with, it's much harder for the big man to contest the shot at the rim. If he does run the pick and roll at the three-point line, the Pelicans tend to use a great shooter to run a go screen to cause that confusion. Overall, while Zion has a relatively limited skill set, each team still has a really hard time stopping it. For someone that doesn't have any sort of jump shot, he's still been historically efficient in his short career. More importantly, Zion's game makes the Pelicans offense much more straightforward for everyone else. Or does it? While Zion has the ability to break defenses apart, that still doesn't answer our question. Why are the Pelicans not at their best when Zion's on the floor with their best players? The same body that has made Zion one of the more unstoppable players in the league also gives New Orleans an interesting dilemma. Because he's only 6'6", 
the Pelicans understandably have to play another big man beside him. But since his game is predicated around attacking the basket, the big man usually has to space out to the three-point line. Unfortunately for New Orleans, Jonas Valanciunas only shoots about one three a game. This gives defenses more leeway to come help on Zion, and that creates unnecessary traffic in the lane since Valanciunas' game is revolved around the paint. Now Zion's good enough that he can overcome some of these offensive deficiencies by using his athleticism to create his own space, but the major problem is when Zion doesn't have the ball. When another ball handler is taking control of the offense, they're at a major disadvantage because there's two non-shooters on the floor. So when they try to create offense, the defense can shake the floor to slow them down. Right now, Zion mostly stands as he's watching his teammates go to work. Even when he moves to put pressure on the defense, the big man gets in the way of a potential score. In theory, it would make sense to use him as a screener. His gravity would open up space for the ball handler to get to the basket. But because Zion and the big man are both in the paint, it invites other defenders to collapse the drive as well. So as paradoxically as it sounds, the Pelicans offense is almost less versatile when they put their best five players on the floor. Zion could still score because of his natural gifts as an athlete, but his presence makes it harder for guys like McCollum and Ingram who are more ball dominant to score. While they can create their own shot, they're not the most high quality. In addition, they both don't have point guard like instincts. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but learning how to find an open shot for others, especially when your spacing isn't ideal, could significantly help this team. This play stood out in particular. McCollum runs the pick and roll and has a chance to turn the corner, but because he sees Valanchunas open, he starts to slow down and feed it to Valanchunas, but Holiday deflects it. Part of the reason he doesn't turn the corner is because Zion moves down early, which clogs up space and results in a turnover. Now take this play from the Heat. Similar to the Pelicans, they have two non-shooters and run the same pick and roll, but Butler's at the three-point line. As Vincent turns the corner, Butler cuts from the slot to collapse the defense, and Caleb Martin gets a wide open three. The Pelicans' big men aren't the best passers either. When they do get the ball after a blitz on the short roll, they haven't been able to get the ball to Zion at the rim. The bigger point here then, is that instincts and IQ can help overcome these skill deficiencies, especially when playing in a more free-flowing offense. But without those traits, coaches have to consistently draw up plays to systematically put guys in the right spots. The one play that the Pelicans run that is very cohesive is when Zion's at the top of the key and they have a shooter running a ghost screen. Then that same shooter receives a flare screen which then opens up multiple options. This has been a play they run quite often because the off-ball defender has to make a decision between helping on Zion's drive or sticking with the shooter, so it's become quite effective. In today's game though, it's unrealistic to have a coach continue running specific sets all the time because it slows down the pace of the offense especially when having someone like Zion play with pace would be more ideal. That's why the Pelicans have been better once they start integrating their bench unit into the game. With someone like Trey Murphy or Jordan Hawkins on the floor, that creates much more space for Zion or Ingram to work with. Those guys don't need the ball in their hands either, so New Orleans has a clear hierarchy and direction on how the offense should look. And that's why they've been able to win a lot of games despite some roster issues in the starting lineup. So what's the big deal then? The New Orleans Pelicans are one of the best teams in the NBA through the first three quarters, but they have struggled to close games consistently. In clutch time, this team has a net rating of negative 16.9, which is only better than the Pistons and Wizards. And it comes back to the core issue. When Zion Williamson is in the game, Willie Green is faced with a tough decision. Does he want to choose talent or fit to close the game? More often than not, he has chosen talent, and in those cases, their best offense is when Zion Williamson penetrates the paint to collapse the defense. But down the stretch, that's exactly what teams are selling out for. Defenders will deny him in all ways, forcing New Orleans to pivot to another man. And when he gets the ball, teams will help early so he's forced to give the ball up. Against Miami, even with four guys that aren't known for their defense, Spo played a 3-2 zone to not only protect their guards against Zion, but to also take advantage of New Orleans' lack of understanding of how to space the floor. Often, this allowed multiple defenders to form a wall around Zion and discouraged them from even considering to drive through them. To counter, 
New Orleans has tried running their money play, but teams do a great job closing down the openings. So when Trey Murphy takes a dribble, OKC is able to retreat, and Shea does a great job stripping Herb Jones on the drive. The other aspect to also consider is fatigue. While Zion has gotten in better shape and can create his own lanes to the basket down the stretch, it does make you wonder if he can consistently do this for an entire game or series, especially when he's going to play more minutes in the postseason. Because of these struggles then, the Pelicans have often left a lot of winning on the table, despite the fact that they're still a fourth seed in the Western Conference, which then means one thing. So in conclusion, Zion Williamson absolutely elevates the Pelicans with his unique talent, but his game creates a unique problem. While he can likely get his stats by playing with most types of rosters, his game requires his teammates to significantly adjust their game to create a more cohesive offense. At the moment, they have tons of talent with a lot of versatile wings and good scores, but that doesn't necessarily work with someone like Zion, who needs the space to not just attack the basket, but to get everyone else easier looks. The good news though, is that this is not the first time a team has faced this situation. Before 2019, the Milwaukee Bucks had a similar problem. Even though they had a lot of talent and a unique one in Giannis, this team struggled to win consistently because of spacing issues. But they completely embraced building around Giannis because they knew that he gave them the best chance at winning a championship. They got rid of their non-shooting centers and acquired Brooke Lopez instead. When they didn't win in 2020, they traded Bledsoe away for Drew Holiday to add more shooting and eventually got their championship. So with Zion's first playoff run, we will learn a lot about how the Pelicans roster truly stacks up with the Titans of the West. But regardless of how they finish, the amazing talent of Zion brings a lot of intrigue to how the Pelicans will be looking, and only time will tell to see how everything ends up playing out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.